Hello everyone, my name is Megan Marie and I'm the Senior Community Manager at Crystal Dynamics and we are here today to talk about Shadow of the Tomb Raider and I am joined by two guests. We have Game Director Danielle Shea-Besson and we also have Senior Brand Director Rich Briggs here. Welcome gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you for Thank being you. here. So we just saw the very exciting E3 trailer that we put together and debuted on the Microsoft stage on Sunday. Uh, before we get to the Q&A a little bit later in the segment, can you guys uh, chat with us a bit about putting the trailer together, what you were hoping to convey, and, and so on? Uh, one of the things that was important for us is to convey a, a, as much as element as possible that you find in a game and a, from an emotional perspective, from an emotional point. So one of the things you see there is really, you know, uh, it's really about the temptation and also the obsession. And you see that, you know, the two sides of life, that, that is something we try to convey there. Uh, one side, you know, it's more, you know, more positive side or one one's more darker side. And, and this is really what we convey. And, and more importantly, though, is about emotion. This is what we want showcase yeah i think it was really important to show that duality and mm -hmm. that's why we split the screen sometimes but also to show that lara's world is coming undone mm -hmm. it's fragmenting it's turned upside down at times because we want to make sure that that our fans know that all the core pillars of the game that we always try and try and offer in, in experience for tomb raider it's it's being elevated mm -hmm. so in this case we're focusing a lot more on the narrative yeah. because Lara being the most confident being the most capable she's ever been we have to show that now her conflict is actually turning inside so it's it's more inner conflict that's ever been done and that's what's going to be so critical on her path to becoming the Tomb Raider is how she responds to that conflict yeah and, and people definitely picked up on the stylistic tone of the trailer it's not something that we've done before with this sort of kaleidoscoped and mirrored you know the duality visually represented it so that was something that a lot of people enjoyed and the music Music too. The yeah. music was very cool. So the song was I Speak Louder. Is there a specific meaning behind that? <laughs> well, we really felt like Lara's actions speak louder than words. Mm -hmm. And the idea that she does feel like she is the one person who can stop Trinity, she feels like she has. And we've seen over the course of, of her origin story the fact that Lara is able to push herself beyond physical, mental, emotional limits and do things that most people can't do. Yeah. And that makes her feel like I'm, you know, she's one of the few people that can stop Trinity. But as you'll see in Shadow with the Tomb Raider, it also leads to some mistakes, a little bit of rash judgment on her part. She feels like because she knows what's best, she's the one that's going to take the dagger. And in doing so, she unwittingly triggers that Maya apocalypse. Yeah. And of course, that drives Lara, being who she is, to say, okay, now I have to set things yeah, right. Absolutely. So we're going to take a quick step back before we get to the Q&A. We're actually going to talk about the reveal events. So uh, this trailer was specifically for E3, but we put together this really cool you know, cinematic CG trailer for the reveal events. It was something we've never done before, is introducing the game around the world in these three reveal events. So do you want to talk a little bit about what it was like preparing those in the venues and, and getting ready to show off the game to people for the first time? <laughs> for the first time, it was uh, nerve-wracking, of course. It was exciting, but nerve-wracking, because it's been, we've been, I've been working. There's a lot of people working a long time. It's been three years and a half now on the game and it was very nerve-wracking uh, we talked about that but you know what what was great about it is just to feel the experience you know mm -hmm. because you're always inside of it you only see you know the things and the details of it things that not going great you know things that going good and you're like excited like a roller coaster mm -hmm. but when you go to these events and you receive that much love from people and uh, yeah, that was it was uh, that was I would say very you know very very exciting refreshing and rewarding for us uh, also the place was crazy, you know, it was the jungle, mm -hmm. and it was Absolutely. dead, dead uh, uh, elements, so it was very cool to go from the game to the real world, you know, how it what felt, so that was, that was very cool. Well, we really wanted to make sure that we were bringing people mm -hmm. into our world, exactly. because as Dan said, it's a lot of hard work on, on behalf of the dev team, and so we said, all right, this game deserves something that we haven't really done before, yeah. so having an event in London kick off first, and then a couple hours later, have an <laughs> event kick off in... In, uh, in Montreal and then another one it was like we were chasing that sun you yeah, know chasing exactly. the eclipse and then another yeah. one kicked off in LA so having all three sets of you know fans and community and, and press and influencers all come in and experience it all at the same time um, I'm really excited that we revealed a lot more information than we normally do yeah, you know, letting people know not just the date not just the key art but what we were doing with the season pass what we were yeah. doing with the pre-orders we wanted to make sure that we were really being as transparent as possible and bringing 
our fans into our world like never before. And that's why, as Dan said, it was great to walk into each one of these spaces and see them just decorated like a jungle, like a Maya civilization. Yeah, so in London, the event, uh, the venue was this really cool, run-down old chapel that was covered with jungle, you know, uh, vines and had a Day of the Dead sort of experience in it. Montreal, it was this kind of cool hip club, but again, at the same time, it had been converted exactly. into a jungle. And then... You can't get much more thematically appropriate than the Mayan, which is a well-known venue here in L.A., uh, and so that one was already decked out with Maya architecture and was very cool. So rather than just talking about it, we're actually going to show you a little bit of what the uh, events look like, so we're actually going to play a video recap of our reveal events now. So we'll take a look. So that was pretty cool. As you can see, there was lots of people there. I was particularly proud. We got 60 of our 100 fan sites out to one of the three events. They could see it, which was really cool. We had our cosplay ambassadors, six super fans from around the world, actually seven super fans uh, who made their own costume before it even the game had been revealed, which was a hard kept secret for them, I know. So the reason that we wanted to show this video is because we have another video that we have not revealed yet that needs some context, but we're actually going to present it without context first. Yeah, world premiere. World premiere of some funny footage that maybe you guys, well, we know we haven't seen before. So we're actually going to roll this other one. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look. Hi, Los Angeles. My name is Daniel Bisson. Tout le monde m'appelle Bisson. Mon nom c'est Daniel Chaillé. Je trouvais même Bisson en mon nom. Bon. Hi, London. My name is Daniel. As you already know by now, ça c'est trois. Two murder that she has to become. Boom. Je vais avoir un. Un f***. On va te faire ça en petit flot. On va avoir peut-être deux, trois, puis on va être correct. Je suis correct. Au niveau vêtements, c'est correct. Tout est beau. Chapeau. De la patente. Vas-y. Voilà. Blanche. Chiant, c'est ton chapeau, là. Je fais quoi avec mes mains? Je peux-tu laisser de même? Ouais. OK, parfait. All right. Correct. Very personal journey. Blah, 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 blah. Experience, bro. Right, c'est ça, c'est bon. And I can I cannot tell you. Ah, f***. Shadow of Tomb Raider. Ah, f***. Myself. Jason. J'arrive pas à me concentrer. I'm sorry, I'm f***ing game to share with Dan. Désolé, Jason. Il faut que je fasse ça, ça fait juste deux heures. We're running out of time. Shadow of Tomb Raider, I need three. Damn you, I hate you. You guys today. C'est parti. Je vais je vais je vais l'avoir, l'avoir. Tomb Raider, Shadow of Tomb Raider. Sadly, I cannot be with you guys today. And but also very. Yeah, it's because I have a text to say. Stop disturbing me so I can finish it. She's gonna be. Um, Nothing, because that's not what I'm supposed to be saying. Never seen before. No, I'm just too I'm eating. Là, là, chez moi, là, parce qu'il y a tellement qui passe, ça parle super fort partout. Euh... J'arrive pas à me concentrer. Bon, je vais penser à des petits moutons, là, quelque chose. Là. Game director at Eidos Montreal. In Los Angeles. I cannot tell you enough. That's it. Tu vas faire les montages, du jump cut. Okay. 
Parce que j'aurais pu essayer, c'est juste qu'ils sont juste là en train de jaser, comme ça se peut pas. <laughs> okay, I, first, I love that. We have to say, Dan, you are an awesome sport for letting us show yeah. that. Thank you so much. Chris, you want to provide that, some That context? was, so all we needed was for Dan to record a 30-second welcome message for each one of the three launch events, because or the announcement events, because obviously, you know, as much as we would love to clone Dan, he couldn't be in all three yeah. places. So we said, okay, so Dan, you're going to be there in Montreal. That's the home base, but we just need a quick 30-second video of you welcoming everybody in Los Angeles, and we'll use it again in London. And little did we know it was two hours to get that message. But in Dan, all fairness, it the, is the finished hard. product yes. was unbelievable. I will say that. The finished product was unbelievable, but getting there was something else. But that's the thing, it's uh, you know, English is my second language, it's not my first one. And uh, of course I'm you know, we're we're ending in production with meaning that we're crunching. Yeah. It looked like cursing was your third language. And then, <laughs> <laughs> but then you know, but then they're like, Okay, here's the text. I okay, all right, I'm I'm going, I'm like, you know, I'm good sport, I'm trying to go and then people ask me questions while I'm in front of a camera and say people are speaking super loud I was super tired you're just was, too valuable they yeah. can't they can't you know stay away from asking that. questions but, for that period of time but it was so funny though because you know Jason our narrative director was behind said you know <laughs> I need yeah, to get shipped down but he was speaking super loud so uh, that was uh, that was funny I didn't know that he was going to do that and uh, you we know we didn't know there was going to be that much good material <laughs> it so it, it necessity required a video so yeah. yeah it took two hours it was it was you know it was painful but uh, at the yeah, same time no, it, was, it, was, it was fun the end product was awesome and like I said to be fair it is hard to rehearse I mean if it's not something that you do on a daily basis it's hard to rehearse a script in front of a screen so. uh, yes especially when, you, when it's not your first language yes exactly so thank you for letting us show that uh, thank you okay so we're going to move on to the fan Q&A now so we gathered questions from Twitter uh, and yeah we have a, we're going to get through as many as we can in the 15 minutes that we have left so the first one I think is very nice Jar Cup asks how was your day today Uh, the day today It's really was nice great. to ask, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great day. Uh, it's crazy. We're doing a lot of things together. Um, <laughs> you guys are the buddy team. Buddy team. We're we spending uh, all our time together, huh, Rich. Uh, <laughs> I love spending time with you, Dan. Yeah. It's good. So, yeah, it's good. A very good day. All right. Awesome. Day one of E3, and I think everybody is already like feeling the energy. And I don't yeah. think they may have just. Thank you, Jar Cup. I'd like to know yeah. how was your day? Yes. We'll look online. Respond to us, Jar Cup. Let us know how you're doing. Appreciate it. Okay, on to, on to questions more specific to the game. So, uh, Elysian Tony asks, previous games were about Lara finding clues about immortality. Will this one touch on the same theme? Um, this one is going to be a little bit more uh, bigger and epic. This mm -hmm. is something that, you know, um, we are going to touch something that is about changing the world. So it's, it, it's less about, you know, it's less about something that is about personal and trying to find what her father was trying to find at the time, but, but now it's much more bigger. It's the stakes of the world. So at the beginning, she's not, she doesn't know exactly what they're at, what Trinity's after, mm -hmm. but at a certain point when she, you know, when she takes the dagger, when she's realizing, oh my God, this is not something just about personal thing, but it's more, much more, bigger mm -hmm. uh, that's that's what is more about okay and what I really like is that I look at Shadow of the Tomb Raider as absolutely being rewarding for all of our fans who have been there from the very beginning you are going to see that threat of immortality because it's going to resolve into something that is even bigger mm -hmm. that this is what Trinity's been going for all along is the idea of using the power of the apocalypse and 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 you know those items and those artifacts in order to remake the world in their image and change the course of, of humanity mm -hmm. On the other side, it's a perfect jumping on point for people who maybe haven't played the previous games yeah. because you cannot get any bigger. You cannot have world stakes that are higher than trying to stop the Maya apocalypse. So yes. if you're jumping off for the first time, this is, this is the moment to do it. But for the fans that are looking at how are we resolving that threat of immortality, you'll absolutely see that continuing. Yes, there's there's right. definitely a threat, but we cannot talk too much about it. We don't it. want to spoil yeah, it. All right, yes, we don't There is one, so... <laughs> that's what we try to avoid, some of the narrative questions that fans have. Some fans are, like, asking about the end of the game. They're like, yeah, do, you really, do you really want to know? <laughs> sure. I feel like talk you don't to us actually after. want we'll to just, know. We'll just type up the spoil end for you. No. Lara wins. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next <She> question. <laughs> <laughs> Next question is from Quinn Quinn 6363 and they ask how long after Rise of the Tomb Raider does the game take place? It's one year. 
One year after Rise of the Tomb yeah, Raider, correct. Of Rise of the and, and we're really excited that there's a lot of side story things, if you want. Obviously not required reading, uh, you mm -hmm. know, if, if, you haven't, uh, if you haven't read them already, but we have the Dark Horse comic that actually is telling the story of mm -hmm. how Lara has actually been training and, and preparing for the events of Shadow of the Tomb Raider, ready to take the fight to Trinity. So she puts herself through a lot yeah. after the events of Rise of the Tomb Raider. So uh, we have the Dark Horse comics that talk about that. And then it's, I think it's a really, we've, we've done that in the past, right? We had Rise of the Tomb Raider happen a year mm -hmm. after Tomb Raider, so you can have that transmedia, those 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 side stories happen uh, and show a little bit of Lara's growth, and then we did the same thing with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Very cool. All right, Lobstercroft asks. Uh, Great says, name, by the I way. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Lobster <laughs> Croft. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Shadow is taking, uh, is taking consider on the events that have been happening. Okay, so this is about the comic books. So are the comic books essentially two separate universes, or are they actually going to tie in very specifically? They mentioned you know, someone, a villain named Mr. Cruz. She feels is right, or is she going to sometimes say the ends justify the means and yeah. become like the exactly. enemy she faces? So there's there's a lot of, of that duality. And again, we tried to show that in the, in the gameplay reveal trailer, but this idea between the light and the dark and, and the shadow has a lot of different layers of significance. And, and the eclipse yeah. for that is really the, uh, the, the, you know, the climax of all that. It's the climax of the ultimate decision. Great, so great. Uh, Michael Frazier asked, how did Lara and Jonah manage to survive a plane crash without getting any injuries? So they're talking about the footage that we showed at the Square Enix press conference, which is the beginning of the game, but it's not necessarily the, the narrative beginning, right? So why don't you speak to that a little bit? <laughs> it's because everybody's dead after the plane crash, and it's just a dream after that. No, did you just spoil the entire Yeah, the trilogy? entire thing. It's just a dream. Oh. So it's not... We <laughs> talked about this, Dan. <laughs> I know, I know. I cannot <laughs> hold it inside of me. Um, the, the, the game is actually talking about it, how they survive about it, and uh, there's a there's a funny take to it. So uh, I can wait for you guys to play it and experience it. But yeah, uh, yeah at the beginning, the plane crash actually happens two days, um, uh, two days uh, later than what happens at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. and they will have some injuries too, just yes. to be clear. Like oh, yeah, Lara yeah. and yes. Jonah, are, <laughs> they, you know, they're not indestructible, obviously. They do survive a lot more than than all of us but, can survive. But Jonah now can take a lot more. Right? Jonah can take a lot of punch. I love no, Jonah's new look. Jonah's like so Jonah much. Is, yeah. He's well, you saw how phenomenal character. Like, Lara, Lara, Lara beefed up a little bit on this. She bulked <laughs> up for all the climbing and everything. So Jonah, yeah. Jonah, was, Jonah probably was looking at her like, okay, all right. All right no, I but it. It. Yeah. if I had to follow Lara for yeah. you know a year, I wouldn't Seriously. be looking like that. I would yeah. be more looking like that. <laughs> okay. All right, so this one I'm not going to attribute to any specific person because we had dozens and dozens and dozens of people asking if we're going to have a photo mode in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Mm. Patented Rich Briggs answer. Mm. Mm. If we were to have one, we'd probably talk about it at a later event. Yeah, I think that would, be, we that would be a good plan. One. All right, we'll leave it at that. We like to listen to our fans, I'll say that much. Yes, great. All right, so Alex H. says, will Lara ever smile or laugh in a Tomb Raider game? This is a funny, very direct question, but I actually really wanted you guys to speak to that, because she does. Yes, yeah, she does. Uh, one of the first questions you ask her. Don't also. spoil the moment, though. No. Don't okay, spoil okay, the I'm, moment. Yeah, you can't no, tell no, no, what happens. No, okay. no, no, you can answer, but don't spoil the moment. <laughs> answer, no, spoil. but don't answer. Okay. Yes. <laughs> A lot of times, yes. No, so she the game, cracks jokes. The she game has. is very, you know, it is it is her her darkest hour and her defining moment and so on. But there are these moments of, of there are. in the story it's, where you get to see that yeah. Laura really is this kind of geek Lighter. archaeologist, and yes. she's there with her best one of her best friends, and and I loved that. I love seeing. And there's that. some lighter moments. Mm -hmm. Like this is one of the most. I've been working on the two previous games. There's moments in this game is even lighter than, than we've ever seen before. So, And I think that's important. You have to balance the darkness because this is absolutely Lara's darkest adventure. And how she pushes through that darkness will, will shape what her life is and what kind of Tomb Raider she'll become. Yeah. But you have to balance it with moments of levity. And otherwise, it's just it's a complete downer fest. So there are moments, and I'm not going to spoil it, but there is one moment in particular where I you literally laughed out loud. I, I literally laughed out loud. And, and, and I, I don't think I've ever laughed out loud while playing a Tomb Raider game before. And every time I see this moment, I still laugh out loud. So I can't wait for fans to experience I love it. these types of moments that really do not just show Lara with, with all this inner conflict, but Lara in many ways being in her element and doing what she does and what she loves best. Great. All right, we're going to rocket through some more questions because we have just a little bit over six minutes. So that Jesse, means we're talking too long. That's, oh, it's okay. that's code. <laughs> that's an, uh, I want to get in as many questions as people as we can. All right, so Jesse Tr says, "I was wondering how long the campaign is." Uh, comparable to the previous games, and yeah. then obviously once you complete the core experience, you will have 
dozens and dozens of hours to explore the world at your own pace and complete all the 100%. Great, great, great. All right, so this one I'm so excited about, fans. I'm so excited. Okay, so Kyle says, I heard there are separate difficulty sliders for traversal, puzzle, and combat. If it's true, how will each affect gameplay? Okay, fast. Uh, we have now we have uh, puzzles uh, also for exploration and combat. You have easy, medium, hard for all of them because we, this this game will have more Tomb Raiding than ever. So we're focusing a lot on that. So for example, in terms of the gameplay for puzzle, uh, remember on Rise, Lara was talking a lot about what you were supposed to be doing doing a puzzle. Now you you only you have the same information on easy. On normal, she just talks about general things, and uh, you still have instinct mode. But on easy, the next step. She's telling you exactly what to do and highlight in blue so you don't have, if you don't like puzzles, you play for different reasons exploration, you can put it easy. Uh, same thing with exploration. Remember the white paint on Rise? Uh, the white paint is only existing now in, in easy. So if you're playing normal, yeah. now the white paint is just blends with the yeah. world. So and by the white paint, we're talking about like the navigation markers. The navigation so you markers. know the path, yeah. what can be climbed, what can't be climbed. Exactly. So the white thing in you're hard. on a slider, you can choose whether yes. or not you want to be guided through the environment. Exactly. So there's, hard this group, no. there's this group on the on the forums called the Growl Group, which is to get rid of white ledges. And this is for you guys. There you go. Hard, you're going to be them. If you don't have it on easy, they will be gone and you'll have to find your own traversal path. And you'll see it is actually harder than you would think. And there's thing, a lot very, of jumping The thing that I love out. most about this and just in case you know just to make sure people understand because a lot of effort went into this each one of those sliders is on a separate scale so, yes. so if you want difficult combat. combat but easy navigation and medium puzzles you can do you that you can do that exactly and one thing that, that i'm also extremely extremely excited about and we'll get into this more uh, at a later date is but there's it's also an accessibility feature right so if you need aim assist you can put it on easy, easy for combat exactly. so that you can you know have your reticle get a little bit sticky and make it easier for you to uh, move through the space and we actually do have dedicated accessibility features which again we'll we'll put a whole blog together about this later but you're going to be able to customize your play so much and I love that I love fans having the option to play the way that they want so absolutely great so excited about that okay uh, paradox huntress is asking will she finally come face to face with the people in charge of Trinity uh, we don't want to spoil too much but we will say that you you are absolutely going to really understand what Trinity's motives are and who the key players are in Trinity Great. All right. Piper Cameron says, uh, basically, they're asking about Lara's hair not being tied up and if it's going to be an alternative style. So they're noticing in the screenshots and in the play, it looks like her hair is down when she's covered in mud. So do you guys want to talk a little bit about that? There's two things. First thing, in this game, Lara doesn't care as much about her hair. So that's why her hair is going like, a little bit like that. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. So she's more obsessed. She's more driven. No? Uh, the second thing is that when she puts mud, that's later on in the game, she doesn't also care about how she looks. So the, the hair is falling down and it, it's really showing how you know how the obsession bar is going so yeah. when you see her hair going like that it's like she doesn't care anymore it's almost so. like she's going feral i mean that <laughs> yeah, when, when exactly. we when we put the mud on you're making a gameplay choice and you're making a decision about how you're going to play exactly. and that is lara getting into that mindset of that that rambo in the jungle fantasy fulfillment Great. Okay, we had a couple of questions, one from Lara's diary, another one from Piper Cameron about the outfit customization in Shadow. Uh, we we explode that. Of course, you have the top and the bottom. Uh, you can mix match them. Now we have also the outfit that fits the type of gameplay you want to play. If you're uh, if you want to be much more on the exploration side, you have specific outfits bonuses for that. And if you prefer stealth or you're preferring uh, uh, being about about to be traversing uh, better in the game, you can do that also. So it's not specifically like on Rise we had like fast regen on most of the uh, most of the outfit. Now we're pushing the game play elements even more to that and you can mix and match wonderful okay let's see we only have a couple left so let's talk about stealth we had a few questions one from Loki and one from, from Rafa Amil um, asking about stealth um, what are the survival and stealth aspects that have been added from the previous games and how does it factor into the jungle yeah the thing that I love is we have this idea of Lara becoming one with the jungle, and and that can change the way you play. You obviously can play aggro if you want to, you know, go the assault mm -hmm. mode. Uh, but there are a lot more opportunities in stealth, and as you've seen from some of the from some of the gameplay footage that we revealed, you have a an arrow that you can craft that will actually cause enemies to be what's called the jaguar fear, and they'll shoot blindly around them, you know, perhaps killing some of their some of their friends. Um, the idea is that Lara is outgunned and outnumbered. Just like Lara is the most capable and calculating that she's ever been, Trinity also as well. They are bringing as much as they can to this fight. It is yep. the stakes of the world. And so we have to up the odds in many ways. And so we give you more opportunities for stealth. And the other thing is that we allow you, if you do what we call pop the bubble and go into assault or get spotted, 
if you hide yeah. or go up into the canopy, the soldiers will eventually go back to just a normal patrol, which is new for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, right. so you can re-engage on your own terms at stealth. It's, it's really summarized by Lara becoming the Jaguar woman, striking out of the jungle and then disappearing back into it, really becoming one with the jungle. Very cool. I think we only have time for one more question, and so Venus asks, this isn't the last Tomb Raider game, right? Right? All caps. I will answer it with all caps. Go ahead. Right. <laughs> right. 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 What do you think? Right. <laughs> all right. That's a Rich Briggs answer. Yeah. Okay, I think that that basically is all the time that we have for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. We have another Square Enix Presents segment with Camilla Luddington and Earl Balin, which is going to be really exciting. We're going to play Survival Would You Rather with them, so prepare, be prepared to be grossed out with questions about what you would rather eat from the Amazon. Uh, and then we'll also be at E3 Live in the Coliseum in the afternoon for a really cool uh, performance and, and narrative cinematic panel. So thank you for watching and keep an eye on our social channels for more information throughout the show. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.